Bricks and Minifigs is your one-stop shop for all things Lego. Hit the link below to find a store near you. Hey everyone, Joshua Hanlon here, and today I'm at Brick Rodeo taking a look at this super cool interactive train layout. There's so many different moving parts to this, so I've got the builder with me in the middle of the display. If you want to introduce yourself, and then we'll go through all of this. Yeah, absolutely. My name is Joseph Herbert. I'm from Buda, Texas. If you're going through Austin, we're the next town south. Um, so this is my hometown, essentially. And I've been working on this uh, for eight years. This is the third version. This version is just for this show and was uh, developed uh, starting six months ago, all the way until the night before the show. So we're working out some of the kinks, but uh, we have some uh, good runs and some bad runs, so let's hope <laughs> for the best. So it is very interactive. I'm probably the only one in the entire, we're gonna start right here. It's probably the only uh, kit in the entire show that says, please touch the Lego. Um, that rubs some people wrong, but most people really dig it. So we're just running around a couple times to get it warmed up. There you go, perfect. But it's been really fun to watch the public interacting with this and all the different stations that we'll go to here. Listen, everything is about the kids. I'm an educator. Uh, I love children. I love interacting. If you watch while I'm doing it, if the kids were here, I'm looking in their eyes. <laughs> because when you tell a kid he can press a button and something happens and they don't know what it is and it just comes to life, oh, they just absolutely love it. They absolutely love it. So the whole idea here is uh, it's real simple. We have three different sized Lego brick. We have the yellow, the green, and the rocks. There's also some uh, non-Lego fairy balls in here. Ignore those. Those are just for fun. Uh, at the end of the show, we do lights off and we turn all the lights off and turn the mocks on. And so my wife sprinkled those balls throughout <laughs> this. And so with windows everywhere for everybody to see everything, it was pretty spectacular. Just a little flare she added in. Yeah, that's it. And then I, well, I was going to take them out. My buddy told me, don't take those out. They look too cool. <laughs> so there you go. So we're at the first station. The whole idea is we're going to take these three different sized bricks and we're going to sort them without ever actually touching them with, a, with any amount of help. So the very first thing is, would you press that blue button? Okay, the first button yes. right here. Okay, you don't need to keep it down. Well, I want to point out that nothing happened because if you give a button to a kid, he's going to press it and again and again, and you can't have kids pressing buttons willy-nilly because they're just <laughs> going to keep on doing it, and it's going to be loading when the train's not there, lifting when the train's not there, so they're all double activated. The kids don't notice it, but I have to hit mine first. Now hit your button. Oh, there we go. Now watch here. Now this particular window, you might want to, the window right to the side is actually made for the kids to see in. So do it again. You get to watch the whole process. Absolutely. That's many, many windows. One more time, please. Many, many windows for that reason. I think it was lug bulk. We got like 600 of them. <laughs> so in this version, uh, we're gonna make it to where you follow the train all the way around. In this first part, you do do that. Uh, but it's not that way for the whole time. But, you know, it's a work in progress. There we go. So this is the whole point. The whole point of the system is this yellow thing. It's called the trommel. It's often found in mining operations, road operations. This is what's going to do the sorting. So to feed the trommel, we got to get it up here first. Notice all the buttons are color coordinated to the sections they're in. So the very first thing we got to do is get our spoil up high. So if you would press the orange button. So that dumps the train car? That dumps the train car into the hopper. Now we got to get the hopper up high and that's green. When I got this to work for the first time, I was pretty pleased. Yeah, that's an amazing mechanism. <laughs> <laughs> the kids really love it. Like I said, they don't know what they're pressing the button for. Go for it. And when they see what happens, they're just really, really pleased with it. Okay, green again. And what is the design of these train cars that allows that to dump and come back down? It's the parallelogram right here. It's this linkage right here. It just, it just makes it a parallelogram. It's real simple, used in lots of machineries, but works very, very, very efficiently. So orange, we'll dump that one. We got a small misalignment, but that happens. <laughs> Green. Okay, so now the train is empty. Stay right where you're at. I'm gonna move it around and park it in its final spot, and then we're gonna sort these guys. Okay, perfect. I like the big octane fuel sign as well, so throwback to the classic Lego fuel. <laughs> so that's right. This is the Pegasi Fuel Refinery, and we are a subsidiary of the Octane Oil Corporation. We're mining. We're actually not mining it. Mining is off-site, and it's dumped into our sump. And here we're sorting it out to pull the green brick, which is going to be actually used to make octane fuel. All the guys, there's not many, but any guys that are here operating it are all going to be octane guys, every one of them. In the final kit, 
it'll, which will be much more agreeable than this. <laughs> this is all function right now. Uh, the next step is form. So we'll see you guys in one year at Brick uh, Rodeo in Houston, and you're going to see a much, much more greebled kit. Awesome. Okay? Love it. So now that we got all our rocks up here, blue conveyor, we want to get them into the yellow trommel. So first of all, press blue. You see they're getting closer. Not quite there yet. Press blue again. And like you mentioned earlier, the color coordination so you can follow the section. Absolutely. So now we're going to run the trommel. When we run the trommel, notice what it's doing. After we start the trommel, we're also going to feed it, so be ready on yellow and blue. So yellow, go. Now feed it with the blue. Now watch what the trommel is doing. See the bigger rocks are tumbling further down. It's all about slits. It's also called a cylindrical sieve. It's used in, press yellow again, we'll keep it going. It's used in road crews to separate dirt into different sizes, used in gold mining to get the gold out. And the yellow makes it about halfway through, and then the green is the first to yeah. die. Yeah, one more time. We'll go ahead and clean this out. Perfect. It's funny, you see we got a pumpkin in there. So anything <laughs> that's that size will work. So, you know, there's some things in there. And I got to tell you, it's not always 100% efficient, as no process in the universe is. However, if you look, other than that orange pumpkin, there are no spills. It's looking everything, really good. Everything needs, is where it's supposed to be. Last thing we want to do is load the train. That's with red. And again, the kid's looking at that and seeing that. And then I say, okay, guys, let's see how we did. We did green and we did yellow. Now, it's left the rocks behind because there's too many rocks in oh. it. But this is a minor thing that we can fix. <laughs> so we'll go and pick it up. So again, all green, all yellow, all rocks. Perfect. So the last thing we gotta do is empty it so the next kid can play and that's in the station seven, which is over here. Just follow the train. So, so this, this, this is known as the sump. And so the idea is that it, the, the, the spoil is being quarried offsite and being brought to our sump and then we're the trauma operations. Next year, we're hoping to have the quarry too. Ooh. To where you're quarrying it and bringing it over here. So the last thing we want to do is, is green, with any amount of luck. This one has been sticky this whole show and I don't know why, but it's the only one. So these parts right here, you might have just heard that loosen up. No, it didn't. These are all breakaway parts because Technic, if you do it and there's no way for it to give, they will tear each other up. So these are called breakouts and they're specifically meant to break away and be reset real quick. Green. There we go. Perfect. So you have loaded it all mixed. You have sorted it without actually touching it. Go for it. And now you're coming back around and mixing it all again. And I say that is a, uh, parable of life. <laughs> it's a non-ending circle and nothing ever really gets done. I think this was a very successful run. I couldn't be more <laughs> pleased with it, Josh. I got to tell you what. So tell me a little bit more about the table design here because you've got kind of your own custom setup here to put this all on. Absolutely. So um, I'm a carpenter by day. That's what I do. I build all day uh, high-end cabinetry or whatever it is. I come home, eat dinner with my wife, and we go into our Lego room and we build all night. So my <laughs> motto is I never stop building. My hands are never idle. So I do make my own tables, and there's two main reasons is look at how far this sump goes. I mean, this goes down 10 inches, mm -hmm. and you can't do that on venue tables. In addition, this lift over here also is inset into the table. So I needed to do that and I put lips on them because all my Lego tables and I've built many of them have lips because you want that. But you can see that there is lots of spillage, but any quarry is going to have spillage, you know, <laughs> so I don't mind that. We will get it more, more efficient as we go. And then what is the reasoning for the raised track around the whole build? Two reasons. A, it's a, it's a call back to when I was a kid. I just always liked raised track no matter what you know the original ho trains and whatnot i like that but more importantly it is to get these tippers high enough to do what they need to do mm -hmm. they would if they were down on the table all these holes would have to be even deeper and so and i like the way it looks i, I just like the way it looks i've always liked the way it looked yeah 
And then what is the setup process like once you come to a show like Brick Rodeo to get this all up and running? Well, the tables bolt together. That's pretty quick. That's no big deal. All these parts, as all of them is module, that comes off. That's a piece. That's a piece. There's a piece. There's a piece. There's a piece. So it all comes apart with uh, Technic pins. It's all locked together. Mm -hmm. And it goes in boxes. The whole setup only takes me about two hours. Yeah, well, yeah. that's fantastic. It's been really fun to watch you interact with the public throughout mm -hmm. throughout the whole show. Uh, I think you were working very hard, very dedicated to this, but I know the kids and adults love that. So thank you so much for running mm -hmm. through everything with us and for all your work in putting this together. I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys. Uh, if you know you want to show the world what you do, it's on y'all's channel. <laughs> so thank you very much. And believe me, once it posts, uh, I get to show the whole family across the world, and it, it, it's going to be great. I really appreciate it. And you will be there in a, a year from now uh, at uh, Houston. Come back and see me, and you'll see the same kit much, much more developed. Perfect. Keep up the great work. All right. Thank you very much.